HTML, <coughs> hypertext markup language, is the code that is used to structure a web page and its content. For example, content could be structured within a set of paragraphs, uh, a list of bulleted points, or using images and data tables. As the table suggests, this article will give you a basic understanding of HTML and its functions. So what is HTML? HTML is a programming language. It is a markup language that defines the structure of your content. HTML consists of a series of elements which you use to enclose or wrap different parts of the content to make it appear a certain way or act a certain way. The enclosing tags can make a word or image hyperlink to somewhere else, <clears throat> can italicize words, can make the font bigger or smaller, and so on. For example, take the following line of content. My cat is very grumpy. If we wanted the line to stand by itself, we could specify that it is a paragraph by enclosing it in paragraph tags. Not even me of HTML, uh, of an HTML element. Let's explore this paragraph element a bit further. Uh, so we have the opening tag, the P, or here we go. Uh, the main part of our element are as follows. Number one, the opening tag. This consists of the name of the element, in this case, P, wrapped in opening and closing angle brackets. This states where the element begins or starts to take effect. In this case, where the paragraph begins. Two, the closing tag. This is the same as the opening tag, except that it includes a forward slash before the element name. This states where the element ends, in this case, where the paragraph ends. Failing to add a closing tag is one of the standard beginner errors and can lead to strange results. <clears throat> uh, number three, the content. This is the content of the element, which in this case is just text. Number four, the element, the opening tag, the closing tag, and the content. Together, compromise the element. Elements can also have attributes that look like the following. <clears throat> attributes contain extra information about the element that you don't want to appear in the actual content. Here, class is the attribute name and editor note is the attribute value. The class attribute allows you to give the element uh, an identifier that can be used later to target the element with the style information and other things. <clears throat> All right, here we go. An attribute should always have the following. Uh, one, a space between it and the element name or the previous attribute if the element already has one or more attributes. Uh, number two, the attribute name followed by an equal sign. <clears throat> uh, number three, opening and closing quotation marks wrapped around the attribute value. Nesting elements. You can put elements uh, inside other elements too. This is called nesting. If we want to state that our cat is very grumpy, we could wrap the word very in a strong element, which means that the word is to be strongly emphasized. 
you do, however, need to make sure that your elements are properly nested. In the example above, we open the P element first, then the strong element. Therefore, we have to close the strong element first and then the P element. Uh, <clears throat> the following is incorrect. The elements have to open and close correctly so that they are clearly inside or outside one another. If they overlap as shown above, then your web browser will try to make the best guess <clears throat> at what you are trying to say, which can lead to unexpected results. So don't do it. Empty elements. Some elements have no content and are called empty elements. Take the image element that we have, that we already have in our HTML page. <clears throat> This contains two attributes, but there is no closing image, tag, and no inner content. This is because an image, um, an image element doesn't wrap content to affect it. Its purpose is to embed itself, uh, embed an image in the HTML page, in the place it appears. <laughs> anatomy of an HTML document. That wraps up the basics of individual HTML elements, but they aren't handy. They aren't handy on their own. Now we'll look at how individual elements are combined to form an entire HTML page. Let's visit the code we put into our index.html example, which we will, uh, <coughs> that we, which we met which we first met in dealing with files. Here we have the following, uh, doc type .html, or doc type, uh, the doc type, in the midst of time when HTML was young, around 1991, 1992, uh, doc types were meant to act as links to a set of rules that the HTML page had to follow to be considered good HTML, which could mean automatic error checking and other useful things. However, these days no one cares about them. And they are historically artifact that they are a historical artifact that needs to be included for everything to work right. For now, that's all you need to know. HTML, uh, the HTML element. This element wraps all the content on the entire page and is sometimes known as the root element, <coughs> the head element. This element acts as a container for all the stuff you want to include in the HTML page. That isn't the content you are showing to page, to um, <coughs> showing to your page, your pages viewers. <laughs> this includes things like keywords and a page description that you want to appear in search results. CSS to style our content, um, character set declarations, and more. <clears throat> uh, Meta char set UTF-8. This element sets the character set your document should use to UTF-8 which includes most characters from the vast majority of written languages. Essentially, it can handle any textual content you might put in, on it. There is no reason not to set this and it can help avoid some problems later on. <clears throat> title, the title element. This sets the title of your page, which is the title that appears in the browser tab The page is, which is the title that appears in the browser tab, the page is loaded in. It is also used to describe uh, the page when you bookmark or favorite it. 
Uh, the title element. This sets the title of your page, which is the title that appears in the browser tab the page is loaded in. It is also used to describe the page when you bookmark or favorite it. <coughs> the body element. This contains all the content that you want to show to web users when they visit your page, whether that's text, images, video, uh, videos, games, playable audio tracks, or whatever else. Uh, the body element contains all the content that you want to show to web users when they visit your page, whether that's text, images, videos, games, playable audio tracks, or whatever. Uh, images. Let's turn our attention to the image element again. As we said before, it embeds an image into our page uh, in the position it appears. It does this via the source attribute which contains the path to our image file. We have also included an alt alternative attribute in this attribute. We specify descriptive text for users who cannot see the image, possibly because of the following reasons. One, they are visually impaired. Users with significant visual impairments often use tools called screen readers to read out alt text to them. Two, Something has gone wrong, causing the image not to display. For example, try deliberately changing the path inside your source attribute to make it uh, incorrect. If you save and reload the page, you should see something like this in place of the image. Let me see that so the keywords for alt text are descriptive text. All text you write should provide the reader with enough information to have a good idea of what the image conveys. In this example, our current text of my test image is no good at all. A much better alternative for our Firefox logo would be the Firefox logo, a flaming uh, fox surrounding the earth. Try to come up with some uh, better alt text for your image now. All right, so let's go to our image. Check this out. I already got a, so it says my test image. I guess a good alt text would be, uh, a giant bonfire, raging bonfire. <clears throat> um, marking up your text. This section will cover some of the essential HTML elements you use for marking up the text. Um, headings. Heading elements allow you to specify um, that certain parts of your content are headings subheadings. In the same way that a book has the main title, chapter titles, and subtitles, an HTML document can too. HTML contains six heading levels, H1 through H6. Although you'll commonly only use three to four at most.
Now try adding a suitable title to your HTML page just above the image element. So what will this be? I'm making an about page. Okay. Cohorts. No. What is this? Now try adding a suitable uh, HTML page or H suitable title to your HTML page just above your image element. So we have done that. you'll see that your heading level uh, one has an implicit style. Don't use heading elements to make text bigger or bold because they are used for accessibility and other reasons such as SEO, try to create a meaningful sequence of headings on your pages without keeping levels. Uh, paragraphs. As explained above, P elements are for containing paragraphs of text. You'll use these frequently when marking up regular text content. Add your sample text. Uh, you should have it from what should your website look like into one of the uh, one or a few paragraphs placed uh, directly below your image.
All right, so we had some paragraph. We added a paragraph. Lists. A lot of web content is lists. The HTML has special elements for these. Marking up lists always consists of two elements. The most common list types are ordered and unordered lists. Unordered lists. Uh, number one, un unordered lists are for lists where the order of the items doesn't matter, such as a shopping list. Um, these are wrapped in a UL element. Uh, number two, uh, ordered lists are for lists where the order of the items does matter, such as a recipe. These are wrapped in a OL element. Each item inside the list is put inside a LI, the list item element. <clears throat> for example, if we wanted to turn the part of the, if we wanted to turn the part of the following paragraph fragmented, into a list. We can modify the markup to this. Try adding a ordered or unordered list to um, your example web page or your example page. So we just added a owner list. There's our list. Links. Links are very important. They will make the web a web. To add a link, we need to use a simple element, A. A being the short form for anchor. To make text within your paragraph into a link, follow these steps. One, choose some text. We chose the text Mozilla Manifesto. Two, wrap the text in uh, A element. Uh, number three, give the A element an href attribute as shown below. Uh, number four, fill in the value of this attribute with the following web address that you got, uh, web address that you want the link to link to. Uh, you might get unexpected results if you omit the HTTPS or HTTP, HTTP part. Um, 
called the protocol at the beginning of the web address. After making a link, click it to make sure it is sending you where you want where you wanted to go. So let's make a link right. Uh, it goes right where we want to go. href might appear like a rather obscure choice for an attribute name at first. If you are having trouble remembering it, remember that it stands for hypertext reference. Add a link to your page now if you haven't done so. Conclusion, if you have followed all uh, the instructions in this article, you should end up with a page that looks like the one below. You can also view it here. So next, we will be working on CSS basics.